Just leave that back there. <laughs> um, so again, perception of sound is created by vibration of sound waves and objects that vibrate within your inner ear and move these hairs. There's a few qualities of hearing. One of them is pitch. This is the frequency of vibrating object. Humans can hear something from 20 to 20,000 hertz. And our variations in what we detect as low pitch or high pitch have to do um, the variations in the basilar membrane in that cochlea. High frequency sounds are in uh, earlier in the basilar membrane where it's more stiff, harder to move. Lower frequency sounds are going to be at the other end where it's more flexible. So here is a great image, okay? So here is our oval window right here where the stapes attaches and the sound waves are coming in. And if it's a high frequency sound wave, it will cause this part of this um, membrane, basilar membrane, to vibrate or move. If it's a lower pitch sound or a medium pitch sound or frequency sound, it's going to cause this area to vibrate. If it's a very low pitch sound, this area is going to vibrate. Again, when those vibrations happen, they move the hair cells that are within here, and they're going to cause a, a depolarization, the passing of an electrical message. Um, perception of sound. Okay, another quality of sound would be loudness. I'm very good at this one. And it depends on the degree of compression of the molecules or the amplitude of the waves. So louder sounds are going to cause this basilar membrane to move even more. Um, louder sounds, faster nerve signals as well. More cells, cells will be stimulated. And of course, we have, this is a review, but eventually the interpretation of the sound interpretation is going to be received by the temporal lobe. And we measure loudness in decibels. Uh, zero decibels is the lowest that we can uh, hear. Um, and every 10 decibels, it increases 10 times the energy within that. Normal speaking is around 60 decibels. If you get around 90 decibels for a prolonged period of time, that can damage your hearing. So pitch. Frequency, loudness are all qualities that have to do with what we hear. The pathway after that initiation of the electrical message begins goes as follows. The hair cells that move as a result of the vibration initiate signals on cranial nerve 8, which is the vestibulococcular nerve, and they send it to the medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata will then send those, that the next neuron from the medulla oblongata will send it to the thalamus. Oops. I meant midbrain. The midbrain will then send the message to the thalamus. I totally deleted a section that was wrong. to add this one in. And then the thalamus will then send the message to the temporal lobe for you to be conscious of it. And that is the pathway of the neurons. One from the, the nerve to the medulla oblongata the secondary neuron to the midbrain, tertiary neuron to the thalamus, and the quaternary neuron to the cerebral cortex. And then you were like, oh, that's what I heard. Deafness is considered any hearing loss. There's two different categories. Um, conduction deafness is when there's some kind of interference of wave, tra wave transmission somewhere in the external ear. or the middle ear. So it could be earwax. That could cause conduction deafness temporarily. Sensorineural deafness is damage to something in the inner ear or even in that cochlear nerve. 
So usually genetic deafness is problems with the cochlear nerve itself. And that's the end of that part.